Good morning, Jay. Greetings all the way from Australia. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Brilliant. I'm even more excited now to speak with you. Firstly, I would just love to give you a huge, massive congratulations, firstly, on your successful series, Curse Films, Season 1. But today, obviously, we're here to celebrate the new and exciting Season 2, Curse Films 2, which goes exclusively on Shutter streaming services from April the 7th. So I'm incredibly excited to not only meet you, but to celebrate this new exciting series that's going live very, very soon. Um, I wanted to ask you a few questions. Firstly, the creation of this series, how did it come to be? And was there any inspiration to tackle a series like this? Well, this, the series um, was was kind of brought to me. I had a friend of mine, Owen Shiflett, worked at Shutter at the time, and they had kind of an internal pitch about this idea. And I had just finished a short documentary called Twisted, which was about a supposed tornado that hit a, it was a real tornado, but it hit a drive-in theater that I, uh, in the town I grew up in, but supposedly hit during a screening of Twister, the movie. Oh. And even further, some people claim it hit during the scene in Twister when a drive-in is hit by a tornado. <laughs> so it's like a, a pretty wild urban legend that yeah. has been around for a while in my area. So I, I just interviewed a lot of people that were, you know, claimed they, that they'd been there, they'd seen it. And yeah. so that was kind of like a weird prototype for Cursed Films. And I think Owen saw that quality in there and brought yeah. it to me and asked if I'd be interested. And I definitely was. Now, that is a good story. And when it comes to selecting the films or the focus of each episode, what's the process of selecting a film to basically do a little episode or, or a documentary on, if you will? What's the process on these films? Are they your favorite films or just films you've heard lots of rumors about? Uh, in some cases, there's some of my favorite films. We usually look at... I mean, you try to have like a, a variety across a season. So especially with this season, mm. starting with Wizard of Oz and ending with Cannibal Holocaust, you can't get any different than <laughs> that. Um, <laughs> so there's a good kind of variety of movies, but also, you know, access to interview subjects, um, the quality of the stories connected to the making of the films mm. and, you know, figuring out if there's a way to bring in any elements that people might not have thought about or aren't, aren't aware of, explore certain areas that aren't as traveled. Yep. Um, those are all considerations when choosing these films. Yeah, it's a tremendous selection. Uh, when I first saw the lineup, uh, I sort of raised my eyebrows going, The Wizard of Oz, really? But you know what? This is actually among my my film collection on 4K, thanks to Warner Brothers. And I got to tell you, Jay, you know, as a young kid, especially, it's probably the most horrific film I ever saw as a youngster. And even in the present day, I'm nearly 40 and this movie still creeps me out. Um, it's mm -hmm. going to be this film or the never ending story that freaks me out the most. And so I, I was actually really thankful that you did pick this film because I always heard of certain rumors and certain myths, even about this film. So naturally I had to get them into this episode and I really, really enjoyed it. But, you know, talking about the wizard of Oz or any, just the episodes you've done, you know, there's a lot to unpack in one episode. You've got found footage, you've got the original footage from the films, you've got interviews, you've got photographs. Uh, there's so much in one episode alone. You know, how long does it take you to collaborate all of these bits and pieces to make one exciting episode? Uh, you know, what sort of duration it takes to put that together? Well, I I mean, it, it, it's kind of different per episode because some of them are the narratives are a little more obvious, you know, like our Serpent in the Rainbow episode kind of follows a pretty traditional narrative of, you know, Wade Davis wrote a book about uh, this supposed zombie powder in Haiti, book got picked up, then the you know movie, movie was going to be made, Wes Craven is the director, and they all go to Haiti, and then everything that happens, happens. Yeah. And that's kind of like a, a pretty simple narrative to construct in the edit. But then some of them are a little more um, maybe essay style or, you know, it's not as, as clear as to what the narrative would be. And that usually takes a little bit longer. And yeah. our Rosemary's Baby episode is a very dense episode compared mm. to the Serpent and the Rainbow episode. Yeah. So it's a lot of history and a lot of talk about 
um, you know, witchcraft at the time and the, mm -hmm. the interest in the occult in the late sixties. And so it, it really depends on the episode, but I mean, I can say I, I'm editing them as well. So we finished filming, I think in August and I've been cutting since then. And wow. I'm, I'm okay. literally finishing cannibal Holocaust this week. So that's exciting. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, there you uh, go. Taking my the, life over. Yeah, hot off the press. And you sort of commented about, you know, hopefully delivering a few new things that people never knew. Uh, look, while watching The Wizard of Oz episode one, uh, which is available from April the 7th on Shudder, you know, there was a lot of things here that I never knew about. And the episode really did confirm a lot of rumors and a lot of thoughts. And to give you some feedback, my wife originally wasn't overly too keen to hear about this episode, but she sort of stuck her head in. She goes, hang on, did they just say this? I'm like, yeah, that's what happened with this film. And next thing she's sitting down next to me and we've, you know, she just had to find out and she had lots of questions. So it really will grab its audience. And it's a credit to you the way this episode is done and the topics you tackle are tremendous. Uh, you know, talking about season two a little bit, what was the biggest challenge that you come across in season two with these new films that you wish to discuss and talk about? Well, I mean, I, I think the biggest challenge was probably filming during a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, the, the films in this season are also a little more international. Some of them, you know, with the, our stalker episode, we went to Ukraine, we went mm -hmm. to, uh, Estonia, uh, when we were in, in Ukraine, we were filming in Chernobyl. So that yeah. was wild. Yeah. We went to Rome for the cannibal Holocaust episode. And of course, all of that was during, uh, COVID and required mm -hmm. all of the safety considerations that comes with that. And yeah. when traveling internationally, it could get pretty, uh, confusing as to what you had to follow and what you didn't. And there were some moments where it felt like we were on the verge of potentially getting stuck in a country for a period of time. And there were, we had to, at one point, we we're going to come back from Rome and go right to Los Angeles to film. And they denied us because you couldn't oh. go from the EU to the States at that time. So we actually had to go back to Canada and chill for a bit and oh, re reschedule. So that was the, a big challenge for sure. Goodness me. And with all the, the researching you've done on season one, season two, I've got to be a little bit curious to ask you, you know, what's the biggest myth or maybe the biggest legend or the most disturbing, spooky aspect of, you know, when comparing to all these films, what's the number one spookiest thing or unusual myth that you've discovered while making this series or maybe an aspect that still kind of creeps you out that you found while making these series? Hmm. I mean... I, I think that the Omen episode really, like the number of stories supposedly connected to that film, mm. you can't help but think like, really, that like yeah. all of these things happened <laughs> during the making of this film. And I, you know, I'm a bit of a skeptic and mm -hmm. even I was, you know, pulled into that a little bit until I start thinking like, well, I'm, I'm interviewing Richard Donner and he's telling me these, confirming these legends but he himself was a, you know, one of the great storytellers in, mm. you know, popular cinema. Yeah. So of course he knows what makes a good story and he's going to lean into that. Mm. But, um, but yeah, I, I, just the number of things that can happen around a film that might be dealing with a subject matter that suggests that there's an alignment there, you know, yeah. it, it, I, it, it's certainly wild. Yeah, and I can't deny it too, some of these episodes uh, are actually more creepy and disturbing than the film itself. I'll be brutally honest, there's some really <laughs> good stuff there that just makes you want to hold your lounge chair just a little bit tighter in your living room. And uh, that's basically all the questions I had relating to Curse Films uh, number two. I don't want to give a lot of spoilers for those that have yet to dive into this series yet. But if I gave you the floor, just as we're coming to a bit of a close um, with our interview, and I appreciate your time once again, you know, if I gave you the floor, if I gave you the microphone to talk to the people of Australia, when Curse Films 2 comes out on Shutter exclusively from the 7th of April, why should they see it? What do you think that you need to tell the people of Australia why they should check this out? The floor is yours. Well, to specifically the people of Australia, I would say the first thing you have to do is get a Bundaberg ginger beer <laughs> and just crack that open. Yeah. I wish I, I, I love it 
that stuff and I should have had one ready to go to really pander here. Um, but just, you know, I, I think it's, it's certainly, uh, attractive to people who are interested in urban legends mm. and, you know, the supernatural and things like that. But on, on top of that, I think it, I'd like to think it's a collection of interesting character profiles as well. There's just a lot of unique voices in this mm. series. A lot of people that we meet that have very interesting perspectives on these stories. And some of them I don't think have been heard from very much. Uh, so we're, we're kind of bringing some of these people. I, Julian Wasser in our Rosemary's Baby episode is, is one of my favorite people that we interviewed. And Victoria yeah. Vetri was amazing. And um, so there's, there's that element. And then, of course, there's film lovers who I, I think if you're a film fan, you will get something out of this show. You will, yeah. you will get the appreciation for the movies themselves but also an appreciation for how hard it is to make a movie, especially a movie that goes on to be uh, legendary, you know? So yeah. um, it's the, the short answer is it has it all. <laughs> yeah, it really does. <laughs> there you go. You've heard it from the man himself. Now, if you can't wait for April the 7th to come around, guess what? You can begin with season one, which is available still on Shutter Streaming Services. So you can sign up, check it out today and get ready for season two, which again, 7th of April, beginning with The Wizard of Oz. Jay, thank you so much for your time. I had an absolute blast with this series. It's been a true honor to meet you, to interview you. And mate, I'm already keen for season three, four, five, six. So please keep doing what you're doing. I'm a movie lover and I adore and appreciate everything you've done and more to come. Again, thank you so much. Thank you.